we've been doing a lot of webinars, especially over the past few weeks, uh, where we were focusing specifically on perfect layers. This is the latest addition to the Perfect Photo Suite uh, family of products. Uh, a few weeks ago, we released a public preview release of it, uh, which is free to download for everyone. And it's a, a light, it's a workflow, a layered workflow solution that is tightly integrated with the Lightroom and Aperture. Um, if you're into doing masking of any kind or blending, uh, Perfect Layers is a really nice product without much of the overhead or the complexities of, say, Photoshop. So what I wanted to do is show you. Um, just how perfect layers can fit into a workflow. You know, instead of just spending the entire time in perfect layers, let's use perfect layers, but also let's still use other products to get a, a final image. Perfect layers is just a component in a workflow. It's not a replacement for a workflow. It's a new tool. Um, and I think any good photographer owes it to themselves to always at least try new tools, see if it's uh, better for them, if it's quicker, uh, and if it fits right in. Now, this example here, we've done this when we were just doing uh, a Perfect Layers demos. This was a, a shot that I took in uh, Universal Studios in Florida uh, after the last Photoshop World uh, concluded a couple of, what was it, in March. Now, um, what I did was I was standing here uh, just waiting for two of my coworkers to finish uh, this going on this ride. Uh, this was in the, I think, the Marvel Studios area. So it was, a, I think, a... It was an incredible Hulk ride. But what I did was I took four quick exposures, and you can see one, two, three, and four. Just handheld, nothing special. Uh, and I did this specifically because I wanted to test out perfect layers before it was released to everyone. You know, I was, I was trying to take different shots uh, to build some use cases. And so what I want to do is I want to compile what we call a, um, a motor drive sequence, something that we will take four separate exposures and allow me to kind of combine them into one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my grid view in Lightroom and I'll show you uh, at the end of the webinar how you can get this working in Aperture as well. Um, the public preview release of Perfect Layers does not have built-in Aperture support. It will when we release it midsummer, but there is a way to get it working and I'll show that to you as well for those Aperture users out there. So the point here is we're going to use perfect layers just as one component of the workflow. And what I did was I selected the four images here, and I'm going to go to File on, in Lightroom, go to File, Plug in Extras, and then select Perfect Layers. When uh, If you're new to perfect layers, there are a few things I want to show you. First is this uh, welcome screen. This welcome screen is actually really important. I, I would recommend that you guys go through these little slides that we have built for you because it has some good information here that um, might help you learn uh, perfect layers. If you're done with it, if you don't want it to come up anymore, you can just deselect this checkbox here and it won't come up. Also, you may have noticed that in the background, what perfect layers uh, did was it built a PSD file. It does that, it'll take whatever images you've selected and it'll combine them into this PSD file, which is a Photoshop file because our PSD files that you create in Perfect Layers are fully compatible in Photoshop. So you can see here that we've got the image here, uh, and this is the file that Perfect, Perfect Layers will work on. It's a non-destructive workflow. It's not actually going to touch any of these source files, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll hit Close, and I see here uh, Anthony was saying that he's unable to load Perfect Layers into Lightroom 3, and I think I know what you're talking about. When I'm done with this, with Perfect Layers here, I'll show you what you can try doing. Uh, and Anthony, while we're going on, can you just in the questions module confirm whether you are a Mac or a PC user and what version of Lightroom you're using? Oh, you said three. All right, so here we've got four layers. Each image is its own layer. And you can see we can hide those layers to reveal the uh, images underneath. So what I like to do typically is I'll start at the bottom and I like to rename my layers so I know what is what. So here's car one. We'll turn this one on, and you rename the layers by double-clicking on the titles, car two. And the reason why I do this before I do anything else is if I decide that I want to rearrange layers, like the order of layers, which you can do, um, it's easier for me to identify rather than just saying background one, two, three, four. Um, so here we've got our renamed layers. In these events, guys and girls, if you're going to um, do a motor drive sequence or you're going to kind of blend images together where you have more than two layers, I always recommend starting at the bottom. 
So turn off the bot the top layers and start with the bottom two on. This way you're actually building your mask upward and you have no possibility of uh, masking out something uh, in, uh, in the process. When you build upward, you're kind of stacking up the masks on top of each other. Okay, Anthony, good. Uh, you're a Mac, cool. All right, so the first thing I'll do when I stack images, especially if they're handheld, if this is a tripod uh, exposure, I probably wouldn't uh, care as much, but when it's handheld, I'll usually drop the opacity, uh, and the only reason why I'm doing that is to see if the images are for the most part aligned. I'm looking to see that, it, you know, because I'm just going to mask in this car, I want to make sure that when I mask it in that nothing else is kind of broken. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to bring the opacity back up, and I'm going to use my masking brush from the toolbar on the top left here. And what this is going to allow me to do is I'll bring the opacity up to 100% because I want the entire car to show up. I'm just going to start drawing that car in. And there we go. So now we've got two layers combined into one. You can see where you've masked. Under the masking palette, there's this show mask drop down. And if you drop down, you can see that there's there are three options. Uh, and this is new to perfect layers. If, you know, if you're familiar with masking in, say, photo tools or focal point, you know that the masking option really only shows you kind of like that. This is what you, you typically see in those products. We're actually increasing the functionality of masking with our products going forward. So now you actually can see the image with the mask in line. You can have either a uh, that kind of overlay or you can have this white. And the nice thing about the white is it's depending on, it'll tell you based on how much opacity your brush is. Um, the if it's a hundred percent opacity it'll be a pure white but if I drop the opacity down say and I mask over here you can see how it's kind of like a gray so I don't really need that so I'm gonna undo that but it's a good indicator so here I'm gonna turn the mask off now that we've done these first two layers let's go to the third car oops we have to turn that layer on Oh, um, uh, you see, this is actually good. What happened was I actually accidentally rearranged my layers. Now, if I didn't know rename my layers at first, it'd be kind of harder to get them in order or just take a few extra seconds. But here, again, what I want to do is I want to combine those two layers with this third one. So I could use the masking brush. Um, or what I can do is I can use what we have a new tool in Perfect Layers called a trim tool. And what the trim tool does is it allows me to create a selection around a part of a layer that I want to keep. So the trim tool, it's this little scissor icon, and it works kind of like a crop tool in that in a crop tool, you'll typically make a selection around what you want to protect, and then when you finish, it'll crop uh, everything around it. With the trim tool, it doesn't necessarily crop. It'll create a mask. So here, I've made my selection, and you can, after you make your selection, you can drag it to real, uh, to uh, reposition it, or you can pull on the handlebars on the edges and corners to adjust the size. But when you make your selection, hit the enter or return key on your keyboard. And what it does is it creates that mask, and you can see the mask here. See what it did was it just followed that selection. Now you can see that we kind of have this little uh, discrepancy here. I guess I fired the two exposures too closely together, and that's fine. What I can do is I can just go up to my masking brush and just kind of, I'm going to eliminate one of those last rows of the, of, the, uh, of the third car. I'm not really too worried about it because for the most part, the only person that will really get that is someone with a discerning eye who will count the number of cars in each section. But here, I'm just going to kind of clean that up so that I have... Um, a proper break and if you want you can keep removing cars until you get a nice clean line and that's where feathering really helps the feathering is controlled over here and what it does is you see the two circles of my masking brush the inner circle is the hard edge and the outer circle is the soft edge so the space in between is kind of like a transition and you can adjust that feathering by um, using the slider here the larger the feather, the more of a transition you'll have and kind of gives you some space to draw. I could have also um, just masked these in. Like if we wanted, we can undo all the stuff 
and that's the nice thing about perfect layers, it's got a history state with undo. You can keep undoing until the original uh, section. So you see what we're doing here? So watch. We can turn this layer back on. And instead of using the trim tool, what I could do is just use the masking brush and paint in the same way. It's there. You have two uh, ways to do it. It's totally up to you. The reason why I like the trim tool when I start really com uh, compounding um, layers is the more uh, subs the subsequent layers that you have below, the more you have to make sure that you paint everything. Like you want to make sure you get everything under here and everything over here, because otherwise you'll have gaps. Now in this case, I'm going to go the opposite route, and I'm just going to kind of remove that first car for whatever reason. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to finalize this. I'm going to go to this image here. I'm going to drop the um, opacity just to make sure that they're lining up properly and they look pretty good. So I'm just going to use the trim tool really quickly here and I'm going to just make my selection. Hit enter. And there we go. We have our th uh, the four cars at once. Now I can hit file and then if I go to export, in, let's say you wanted to save this as a JPEG or a TIFF. You can do that by going to File, Export, and you have your option here to select JPEG and TIFF. Um, but I want to actually update that PSD file that uh, Perfect Layers created, and so I'm just going to go to File and then hit Save. And what that, that's doing is it's updating that PSD file. John's asking if there's a history list like in Lightroom. So what John's referring to is over here in Lightroom, if you go to the Develop module, Let's just collapse the presets pack paint. There's a history list. So if I was working on an image, as I make an adjustment, it adds that state to it. Uh, no, John, there is no history list like that. Um, but it does have a history. So if you keep undoing, you know, Control or Command Z, um, it will keep reverting back to uh, uh, all the way up to the original uh, state. So here we've got the image. Um, John, it'll save all. It saves all of the steps from when you first started. John asked how many step uh, past steps are saved. The entire state, so it's uh, it's pretty good like that. Um, so here we go. We've got the image here, and it's looking pretty good. But um, and again, that was just part of my workflow. And if I wasn't narrating, you know, what I was doing, I could have had that done in ten seconds. Just quick, 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 done. I've got the image here, and what I want to do is I want to change the sky. The sky is I, I am I cannot stand boring blue skies. People typically we're happy as photographers when it's blue sky because it typically means that it's fair weather. But from an actual image perspective, to me this is very boring. Um, just it's just like a blue background. So I what I do a lot of times is I actually just um, shoot skies, and this shot was actually taken with my iPhone. Um, you know, do not underestimate the capabilities of your mobile phones. Uh, well, if they don't have a camera, then there's nothing to underestimate. But if your phone has a camera, like the iPhone 4, which is what I have, or an Android phone, you know, they'll have, or even the iPhone 3GS and 3Gs, they have, the 3s had the 3 megapixel camera, I think, or 2 megapixel. The, four, the iPhone 4 has a 5 megapixel camera, and there are Androids that have 8 megapixel cameras. My point is this. Do not underestimate if you see a cool sky, just shoot it. And I do this all the time. Just shoot the sky. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these images here. Oops. I think this image and this image. And I see some questions coming in. And I'll, uh, Linda and Anthony, I'll, I'll follow up with you guys as well. Let's send these to Photoshop because I'm going to use Mask Pro. And Mask Pro is... Um, requires Photoshop for now. So that's why we have to go into, into this product. So first thing I want to show you here is on this is the PSD file. Notice how I, I mentioned that it's fully compatible and it is. You can see the four layers with the titles that we renamed as well as the masks. So that's all good. We have on this other tab over here the sky. So the sky, the first thing I'll do here is I'll probably run noise reduction across it. And I could have done that in Lightroom, um, but I've got, I like this product, Denoise 5 by Topaz. I just kind of like how it does a, a noise reduction here. So I'm going to just apply a quick noise reduction to smooth, the, smooth out the image. Uh, 
and it should be done now. Good. So now it's smooth. Looks good. Um, I'm going to go to this first image here really quickly, and I'm going to do what's called stamp visible. Now, the way to do stamp visible is it's I can't stand the shortcut key or the hot, the uh, the keyboard shortcuts that Adobe did for stamp visible. What stamp visible will do before I tell you the shortcut keys is it'll take all visible layers and it'll create a new layer on top of it. So it's kind of like a snapshot. You can hide these layers if you want. Um, it's a nice way to kind of test something out without uh, working on the actual layer. The shortcut key for stamp visible is on, on a Mac it's command option shift E. It looks like your, your hand turns into a claw. We call it the claw actually at work. Um, and on Windows, it's Control Alt Shift E. The easier way to do it is go to Layer, then go to Merge Visible here, and do not click it. Instead, if you're on a Mac, hold down the Option key, and if you're on a PC, hold the Alt key and click it. So it's again Layer, select mer or highlight Merge Visible, and then hit the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and it'll do the same thing. And you can see if you go to the history state, it's called stamp visible. And you can see what we have here is we can turn off these layers because we've got a new uh, layer here. The reason why I did that is because I want to just go here. I'm going to select this entire sky. Actually, before I do that, what I want to do is rotate it. Uh, I just want to rotate it 90 degrees because the uh, roller coaster image is vertical. So now I can select this, drag it over, and I'm going to hit uh, the shift key before I let go because that'll position the sky directly on top of the image. Okay. Cool. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the sky under the roller coaster and I'm going to create a layer mask. Now what we can do is we can go to Mask Pro and start masking out the boring sky and fill it with a good sky. So how does Mask Pro work? Well, Mask Pro works by using color as a differentiator. Color is your bias. And you're going to use colors that you want to keep and colors that you want to remove. So the first thing I'll do before I start selecting colors is I'm going to just create a border around this area here just to get rid of the top part of the image. So by using a flat brush, I'm going to create that border like you see, and I'm going to use a bucket tool to fill that in. So that was quick and easy, not much of a deal. Now I'm going to work on filling in the rest of the image. I said that we used colors to protect, which we call keep colors, and colors to drop or remove. The way you select them is with these two droppers here at the top. The left dropper is a keep dropper, the right dropper is a drop dropper. With the keep dropper, you select the colors to protect. So I'm selecting these colors here along the edge of the roller coaster. Oops, I didn't want that blue. And now I want to get rid of these blue colors in the sky, which are pretty consistent. So I can use this magic brush. See magic brush? It's a brush with a little uh, sparkly on top of it. That will actively compare these buckets here, the keep colors and the drop colors. And what you're going to do with just a small brush here is just paint out that area. So there we go. We're kind of getting that nice transition here. We might want to refine our drop colors over here because they're not getting, uh, the magic brush was not picking it up. There we go. And you can do that on the fly. You can, uh, as you're painting, you can select colors to protect and colors to keep on the fly. So here with the same mask, I'm going to select these brighter colors, some darker colors, and just these different shades of blue. The more colors you add, though, so the more colors you add to a single set of colors, the slower it's going to get. But here, because it's a low-resolution image, it's actually working pretty well. So notice how I'm able to just paint right through, which would be pretty much impossible. And it's something that I would not try to do in Photoshop because especially through these little areas here, see how I'm able to just get right through them but retain the entire track, retain all the people. That's really important to me because I want the sky to be fully transparent through every single part of the image. 
So here I'm just kind of using the magic brush to continue through, just painting on. And once you um once you become kind of comfortable with Mask Pro, this becomes a snap. You instantly start to recognize how you should uh, select your colors to get the most efficient masking brush. Here, let's zoom out a bit just to make sure that we got everything. Let me just add these uh, trees because I want to protect them. I don't want uh, them to be masked out. So you could see how I'm able to kind of protect all those complex ed edges of the trees, all the poles. And this is where we get kind of, if anything, this would be co considered a tedious process because I don't want you to have to get bored watching me. But it's important to see what you can do. We use perfect layers just to get those four images combined together, which we weren't able to do prior uh, to perfect layer or from Lightroom into photo without going to Photoshop. And it's important to have alternatives. Okay, so here we go. We've got. Let me just uh, refine my selection here and fix this guy up. There's a cool, oops, that's not what I wanted. That's a flat brush. I wanted my magic brush. There we go. Cool. There's a cool mode here. If you go to view and then go to mode and select mask, you can actually see your mask. What this is showing me is that Mask Pro did a wonderful job up here, but we have some refinements down here. We don't want this to be gray. We want it actually to be as black as possible. It also shows me that there's certain little spots that I miss, these little white slips. So what I'm going to do is just use a flat brush and just close them out. Then I'm going to go to my drop palette, my drop uh, dropper, and I'm going to select these colors here because these this means that these are colors that have not been fully picked up. And so here you see how as I'm doing that, but watch, I'm also painting into the um, structure so we want to be very careful about that. So all I'm doing is I'm just refining my selection here. So that the full sky comes through. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our mask here. Let's go to File and then go to Save Apply. And there is our mask that Mask Pro built for us. So what can we do now? Well, there are a few things we can do. I can go to this sky layer here and I can add a, an adjustment layer. So if you go to Filter or Layer rather, and then go to a New Adjustment Layer, we can go to the Levels here. Oh, that's not, actually, sorry about that. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is go here. I like going, you could go through the um, layers palette, but I like going over here uh, to the, oh, that's my mask. <laughs> this, next to it, the contrast icon, you can go to levels. And that'll bring up a levels uh, adjustment layer. And what I can do here is if I want, I can adjust, adjust the sky. Because the sky is on its own layer, I can kind of make it more dramatic just by adjusting my my white point, my black point, and my midpoint. So you can see how instantly it's getting much more dramatic. If it's too saturated, you can go here to the saturation, the hue saturation adjustment layer, go to the blues. So you see this channel over here, you just there are different colors across the spectrum. Go to blues and then just drop the saturation a bit. You can also make it brighter if you want. The point is now you've got a much more interesting sky. And it's kind of complementing this very interesting motor drive sequence. But we're not done. Let's go back here and let's actually, um, actually I want to put this hue saturation below so it's only affecting uh, the sky layer. Now what we can do is let's go to focal point. Focal point will allow us to kind of change the plane of focus here. I really only want the first car here because it's the largest one, I want that to be pretty much in focus. And let's actually render the rest of them out of focus. The reason why I got this message here is because I launched focal point from a an adjustment layer, not from an actual RGB layer. Now, an RGB layer just means it's an image layer. So this here is an image layer. If we go to focal point, 
I will be giving other examples, David, of perfect layers. Every image that we do now. All right. So we have a problem here. This is actually good. This wasn't. This was totally unforeseen by me. The mask itself is coming through as well. So what can we do about this? Well, let's hit cancel. And let's stamp this layer again. Let's go here to layer, merge visible, and we'll hit the option or alt key to create a stamped layer. And now let's go to focal point. What was happening was a uh, uh, focal point was picking up the mask as well. So by stamping that layer, we were able to um, make sure that we have a new layer where all the masks were combined. So there's always, look, nothing is always perfectly seamless, but it's important to know what you can do to kind of get to where you need to be. So I saw, oh man, that's a problem, and I did not anticipate for that, but I'm glad that I was able to show it to you and how to fix it. A lot of times if you see that, you can actually just create a st um, stamp your layer. Um, and you can do that in perfect layers as well by merging the layers together or copying the layers. All right, so let's reset our settings here in focal point. So here's our focus bug. Anywhere inside the bug will be in focus. And anywhere outside will be out of focus. I'm going to change the shape of my bug. The bug right now is round. Let's change it by going to the shape drop down to planar. And now it's a square. And I want my plane of focus to be kind of just this, this first car. All right, now it's looking a bit too fake because the amount of blur is way too high. So let's drop that down really, really low. Just about there. And I'm actually going to drop the focus bug down even more because I don't want this car in focus. I just want this car. But do you see how it's almost looking like it's going from out of focus, out of focus, towards in focus, in focus? It's actually looking pretty cool. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start adjusting my um, focus areas using this focus brush. I'm going to bring the opacity way, way, way down of the brush. And I'm just going to start brushing in areas back here. I want that to be in focus. And I want the front part to be in focus. I just basically want all this to be in focus here. That's really important to me. I also am going to just paint a few quick strokes of focus here to make that transition more apparent. A few flicks over there. And then I'm going to change from paint focus to paint blur and in an even a lower opacity. And I'm just going to kind of drop my brush size and just paint a little blur on this pole here. Just a little bit because it was tack sharp before and I really didn't want that. And also on this pole here. Each um, stroke that you make is iterative. Watch, if I show the mask here, watch as I draw. You see how it gets brighter and brighter? Th that means it's iterative. All right. And then we might Let's do the same thing for this track here. Cool. Now what I can also do is drop the brightness of the background, boost the contrast, and add a tiny bit of a vignette. And we hit apply. Now we've got a pretty fun shot um, where we used tools that we already had with a new tool. And focal point we could have accessed in Lightroom. That's fully accessible. But um, Mask Pro is still one of those products where that requires Photoshop. But I liked it because it was able to put a much more dynamic sky in the scene. And so there you go. That's one example of how you can have some fun with uh, the products, including Perfect Layers. Let me address some of the questions here uh, before we move on. So Anthony was saying that he, so Anthony, you installed Perfect Layers, but you don't see in Lightroom. That is a known issue, and what require, what's required is this. If you go to File, and then instead of going to Plugin Extras, you should see Perfect Layers here. If you don't, go to the Plugin Manager, hit Add. And then just uh, navigate to perfect layers. So go to your applications folder, go to the perfect layers folder here, plugin files, 
and then there's the Lightroom plugin. That dot LR plugin is Lightroom plugin. So I select that, um, and it'll add. And then you might have to relaunch for, uh, Lightroom to see it, but that's sh what should do it. And you should see it right over here in your plugin manager. So try that out. Um, Linda asks, can you change the opacity of each layer you mask in? Yes, absolutely you can. I can show you that as well. So, and John asked, when I was in focal point, when I was saying that I could drop the brightness of the background, it's affecting um, anything that's blurred. So yes, whatever is in focus will not be adjusted with the brightness and contrast ladder. It'll only adjust whatever is in blur, including the transition from focus to blur. The reason why that happens is uh, adjusting brightness and contrast, those are two excellent ways to further um, bring your eye to the intended focal point. So it would make no sense to darken um, the focal point. You want to darken everything around it. And it does it in a very kind of nice, seamless way. All right, let's move on to, let's see what other examples we can do. Let's do this one here. This is another similar example of using uh, perfect layers to bring two images together with different elements. Now, I took this image uh, I, also in Universal Studios. This was uh, in the Jurassic Park ride, I think. I can't remember. And it wasn't fair because my colleagues went on the rides. I wanted to stay off because I wanted to get shots. Um, so here you've got, the reason why I took this shot here is I had a neutral density filter on my uh, lens. You can see that uh, it was a 30 second exposure. And the reason why I wanted that was not so much for anything around it, but just this part of the waterfall. That's all I really cared about. Then I got another shot, and you can see my, kind of can see my two coworkers in the back over there. That's that's uh, our VP of sales, Brian, and that's our VP of marketing, Mike. Mike's wearing the hat. Brian's got his arm up. And so I want to kind of bring these in together. So we can do one of two things in perfect layers. We'll send both of these images to perfect layers by going to file, plugin extras, selecting perfect layers. So you can see, let's, um, let's rename our layers. This is um, long exposure. This is uh, action exposure. All right. I could bring the long exposure on top and then use a masking brush at a lower opacity. And this kind of goes, I think, Linda, to your question about can you change the opacity of each layer you mask in. You could change the opacity of the layer itself using this uh, layer, the opacity slider here. So there's your opacity. But you can also control the rate at which you mask something in. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this area out. And I do it at lower opacities typically to see where I'm going. So you can see that the edge of the water kind of crests up there kind of looking where it stops. I, it stops kind of where the, uh, the um, you start to see the caps of the water. So I'm just kind of getting my border first. All I really care about right now is this wisp. And I don't really care about the blending that much yet because I'm going to change the overall look of the image in photo tools. So once I start getting a more comfort as to the boundary of where the water spray ends, there are a few things we start doing. So here we're kind of getting to the edge of the water. Nothing over there. So do, I hope you guys see what I mean. Like you, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of getting my outer border. Once I get the outer border, what I can do is change my paint out to paint in. Just restore some of that. Let's bring the feathering up. Because what that does is it kind of gives me a nice uh, room to play. Kind of paint this area in. Right in there. Because we want to kind of maintain some of that natural tone. Now we've got a kind of a nice uh, seamless kind of transition. What's the name of the ND filter um, and how many stops, Raymond's asking? It's a Lee Big Stopper. 
that's the name of it. It's in a, and it's a 10 stop neutral density filter. It's pretty much as um, as thick as you can get or as opaque as you can get. And you can see it also did a, did a really cool job of getting motion in the palm trees up here. I really like it overall. And so now I'm pretty happy with the overall mask. I mean, I could definitely spend more time with it. But it's um, overall, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to hit File and then Save to update the PSD file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go in Lightroom to our updated PSD file here. And we could start doing some micro adjustments. Like I want to bring the crop down a little bit because I didn't want that much foreground. I'm also going to rotate um, to straighten out the image. Now I'm going to go to uh, Photo Tools by going to File, Plugin Extras. And Anthony, I'll work with you offline. I'll give you my email address at the end because if that's still not working for you, we will get it going. If you go to Plugin Extras, you can go to Photo Tools right now. So let's go to Photo Tools from Lightroom. We'll edit the image. I'll just save it as a TIFF file, 8-bit. It doesn't really matter um, here because I'm not going to be working on it for production right now. And I'll hit Open. So here you can see we have Photo Tools, which is a collection of over 300 different effects. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start seeing different options. What can I do to this image? Uh, so the first thing I, I want to do is kind of cool it off a bit. And so I'll just add a, an effect called Cyberpunk, see if it does anything good. I like what it's doing to the waterfall. So I'm going to drop the strength down, invert the mask so it hides the mask. And now I'm going to use my masking brush, set it to paint in, and just kind of paint that onto the water. I just kind of like how it looks, maybe paint it onto the spray up here just to give it a little bit of a cooler tone. I don't really want it to go on the water below. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add pastel colors because I think it's going to do a nice job of boosting the uh, raft here. It's important when you work with photo tools that you learn to see what each effect does. So I know pastel color typically affects yellows and greens. And you can see how it's boosting as I adjust the strength. See how it's really popping the yellow in the um, in the raft. So again, I'm going to invert the mask. And there's no problem with just using an effect for one small area, like this area here. I want that the boat to pop. And then I might try Moulin Rouge. I don't know if I'm going to shoot myself in the foot with this effect. It's pretty strong, as you can see when it comes in at 100%, but let's drop it down to zero. And I kind of like what it's doing here. The last thing I'm going to do is go to the lighting effects. And you see this little effect called dynamic light, and it's got a little bug icon next to it. Basically, um, what will happen is um, I'm going to select the, let's think, let's do the darkened round. Well, it add the stack. And there's a method to my madness here. Let's actually hit add to step back. So you've got this bug here, just like the focus bug, except it's an effect bug. I'm going to put the dark circle over the boat because I'm going to create a custom vignette. So here it's kind of over the boat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the mask. So right now, whatever's inside the circle is dark and everything outside is not dark. If I invert it, it does the opposite. And I can control this, the transition with this fade slider. So now we've got a nice cool vignette around the boat. The boat really pops. I can also go to my basic brushes, go to brush lighter, hit add to stack, and that's just going to dodge whatever I brush, meaning it's going to make it brighter. And so I'm going to brighten up this waterfall because that waterfall is really important to me. And I'll brighten this the uh, trees a little bit. and maybe these tracks to kind of give the eye some motion or you know start a starting point and ending point and if you paint outside just change from paint out to paint in or paint in rather to paint out and just paint out oh no paint in sorry this area oh no it must have been bright to begin with never mind i thought that was actually painted in um so here we go here is let's hide this 
And then here is our original image. And we were able to kind of bring it out a little bit more like with this. Let's hit apply. And now we've got our fourth image. So it's a fully non-destructible workflow. Let me see if there is a question. What's the difference, Michelle's asking, what's the difference between erase and paint in, paint out? Paint in and paint out will only work on, it'll paint in or paint out, revealing the layer directly below it. Erase will erase everything all the way to, so let's say you have five layers or five effects stacked and you want and you hit erase, it'll remove, it'll erase everything to the original uh, layer. So I don't recommend using erase. I recommend using paint in and paint out. In fact, in perfect layers, we got rid of erase altogether. David asks, can you change the exposure or contrast of each individual image after blending? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. And Rose is asking, um, how do you update the PSD file with the layers whenever you open in Photoshop independently the layers are gone? Yes. In Lightroom, so here's a PSD rose that we just worked on in perfect layers. I combined two images uh, to create this one image here. If you go to uh, photo edit in Photoshop, if you select edit with copy or edit a, or edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or edit a copy, um, it's going to be flat. If you edit the original, you will have your layers with the masks. And then you can always go to File and then Save As to, to save it as a new file. Yeah, Mike's saying that the Lee Big Stopper is not available anywhere. It's hard to find. It took me, it actually, it wasn't bad to, when I ordered, I got about 10 days uh, later, but I have friends who are in, you know, over a month now waiting. Um, Lee is a small company in the UK, and uh, they uh, they don't they kind of build products to whatever um, methodology they have. So it's it's weird. It's not like they just churn out products. Um, let me see if there are any other questions. Yeah, David, do me a favor. Uh, if you can re elaborate on your question, I'm not sure I understand it. What basics do I need in order to use perfect layers, and what will the cost be? So that's what Marianne is asking. Um, and can you use perfect layers with Photoshop Elements? No. Uh, so perfect layers is an alternative to Photoshop Elements and Photoshop. So they don't work. They're not typically hand in hand in terms of you can't access perfect layers within Photoshop or Elements. You can work in photo in a perfect layers and then bring it to Photoshop or Elements to do some other things, like apply filters. Um, and then what will it cost when it's released as a standalone? It'll be, I believe, 159 But if you ex already own the perfect photo suite, what we have now, you'll get it for free. So, Vivian, I think I just answered the same question. Uh, it'll be, it's gonna, the final version will be released mid-summer. You can download this public preview release right now. So, um, and it'll be 159. I don't know how, uh, what other, what promotions will be when we launch, but I'm sure there'll be some promotions. All right, let's work on another image here. Oh, here's, this is a fun one. Now, you might notice that I'm following certain similar techniques here um, in terms of what I'm doing. And that's fine. The key is to, ex it's, it's all about experimentation. You really want to experiment. So what I'm going to do here is I've got this image. This was taken on Martha's Vineyard. This is a gay head lighthouse um, or gay head light um, a couple of weeks ago. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to readjust the crop. Actually, no, I'll leave it alone for now. I typically will do my crop at the very end. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask in. We're going to go through the same process of masking in a sky, but before I do that, what I want to do with this image is I want to kind of make it a little bit bolder. And I can do this using perfect layers by using layer blending modes. 
so in thumb and light you're more an aperture what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to photo and then create a virtual copy right here the shortcut is on a Mac it's command apostrophe and on a PC it's control apostrophe so what it does is it just creates a snapshot same exact image one two now on the second image I'm going to go to the develop module and I'm going to just desaturate it to remove color and I'm going to boost the contrast I'm also going to change my uh, I'm going to bring out the highlights a bit and I'm also going to uh, 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 what am I trying to say flatten the shadows by using my tone curve might also bring out the overall mid-tone not a traditional S curve but that's okay the reason for that is you can see I've got a black and white in the color now if I select both of these images again derived by one single image and this image was also long this image was taken with my lead big stopper one exposure primarily just to get this motion in the water select both images and go to perfect layers so I've got B and W and this is color you can see that if we hide them there's our color and there's our black and white now we've got these blending modes and this is something that is that you won't find in Photoshop or elements and this is really nice all you need to do in, in perfect layers is hover over the blending modes to see what the effect is so what you want to do is hover th over each one of them and find one that you like so here again I'm going for something bold I'll probably stick with soft light and I'm also going to drop the opacity. If it's too strong, you can drop the opacity. And there we go. So I'm going to go to File, Save to update my, that PSD file that was created. Is the beta of perfect of photo of perfect layers easy to uninstall? Yeah, just delete it. Oh, David. You should always have your coffee before joining the webinars. I, I always make sure I at least have one or two cups before I start the webinar. Um, all right, so here's the image, and what we're going to do is we're going to add this sky layer. I took this in Seattle over the weekend, and I, I got to say the Pacific Northwest, I'm in the Northeast outside of Boston, and consecutively, day after day, I, was, I never stopped shooting the sky. <laughs> hey! The, the thing is, Jill, that these are beautiful formations. Oh, up here, it's just gray, like a blanket. And that's great if you're doing portrait photography because you get diffuse light. You've got the world's largest softbox. But I go for these textures in my clouds because, again, I'm not a fan of boring blue skies. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to send these two images to Photoshop by going to Photo, Edit in Photoshop because I want to use Mask Pro again and we'll edit the originals. So here is, um, I, who was it that asked? It was Rosa, I think. You can see again, um, because I did original, here are my two layers with the titles that I set, selected, black and white and color. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is select this sky and then bring it over to this image here and uh, hit shift. The key here is holding shift before you let go because it'll place the image directly on top of the underlying layer so you don't have to do any free transforming now let's hide this layer and again let's go to this black and white layer and let's stamp it to stamp it we go to layer go to merge visible press the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC and press now we have a stamp we can kind of we can delete these two layers if we want to save space doesn't really matter and we've got this layer here so let's put the sky layer under the background la or the uh, originally the background layer now let's create our layer mask now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer because what I want to do is you see how you're starting to see that cloud layer appear I'm going to go to my sky layer and we can again let's rename it let's go to sky and uh, image under sky I'm going to go to edit free transform which is command or control T and let me zoom out a bit so that I can see my handlebars here are the handlebars and what I'm doing is I'm just adjusting the sky layer 
I'm kind of positioning it so I have exactly what I want. I'm going to move this over so that there's a little bit of blue. You see over here in the lighthouse? I want some blue around the lighthouse. And now I'm going to just kind of stretch this out. Because they're clouds, the distortion is not terribly apparent because clouds take an infinite number of shapes and sizes. That's what, another reason why I love clouds is because one second you're looking at them and it kind of, oh, that looks like a dinosaur. And the next second it looks like, you know, the Starship Enterprise. It's very, very cool like that. The key with free transform, guys and girls, in Photoshop is you won't be able to do anything else until you commit or cancel the transform. You can commit or cancel with these checkbox, the check mark or the uh, circle with a strike through. So I'm going to commit the transform, go back to my foreground layer, and bring the opacity up to 100. Now I'm going to go to my layer mask and we're going to launch Mask Pro. All right, so let's try to um, kind of bust through this one because I want to answer all questions as well. And I'm in no rush. Um, we're approaching the hour, and if you guys want to stick around with me, let's go. It. I mean, I have no problems spending more time on these webinars. Um, it's fun when it's one of your primary responsibilities. So I'm going to go here in Mask Pro, and I'm going to use this flat brush. The, the, the flat brush is the brush without the sparklies. One thing I didn't know, uh, bring up last time are your modes. Pretty much every tool has these modes here. And the modes are, are these two little squares. And they're f they might be familiar if you're a Photoshop user as your foreground and background. But the difference is the mode here that looks like a transparent checker box, that's to remove. If you click it or hit the X key, see how I'm hitting the X key and switching? It'll swap modes. This mode that looks like a little jewel is your restore mode. Or you can think of it, this is paint out, this is paint in. So I'm going to paint out, and I'm going to kind of draw around the lighthouse and across the horizon. And I'm going to get as close as possible. And this is exactly why I freaking love my tablet, my Wacom tablet. I use this thing every day. I have no problems promoting them on my webinar because I'll promote any tool that's helpful that I find may, may benefit a photographer. Um, and it just makes drawing so much easier, especially fine drawing. So you see how I've made this border? Now I can go to my bucket tool right below the flat brush and fill in the rest of the sky. But we're not done. We're not done. Now we have to actually uh, start masking. So let's go here. Let's move our palettes so that they're not blocking us. And let's start selecting some keep and drop colors. The colors I want to protect are the colors of the brush and the lighthouse. The colors I want to remove are the colors of the sky. And you can see how as I'm selecting them, they're adding to their appropriate buckets. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of quickly mask through. Get the sky through there. Okay. Now, let's go here. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I actually want to refine my selection now. Let's select these colors to protect. And these colors to remove. I have to select these colors in the water to protect. Okay. It looks like there's some um, contamination, and I'm okay with that because I don't want to spend that much time refining everything. Oops, I want my flat brush here just to kind of get rid of that. All right, let's go to File, Save, Apply. And I, what I would do normally is probably work on this top part some more, but again, it's just tedious right now to do. Oh, why didn't my mask come through? That's a bummer. Let me see if I go back here to save or to Mask Pro. Let me actually quit out of Photoshop. That's happened to me sometimes. I don't know if it's happened to you guys, but sometimes when I go to Mask Pro and I do my mask, it, uh, it didn't uh, apply to the actual layer mask. So let's really quickly 
repeat that process because I do want to show there's a cool trick and I'm hoping it's going to work this time. There's a really cool trick that I'd like to show you. Oops. Let's just stamp that, go here, select my move tool, drag it here. That's not working, so let's copy and paste then. There we go. Always more than one way to skin a cat. You always have to remember that. Although I don't know why you'd want to skin a cat. All right, now let's mask here. And let's see if we can kind of bust through this. All right, so the first thing I did was I used my flat brush. Let's see if we can kind of go here around the lighthouse and then straight across. Boom, fill, fill that, go to the magic brush, quickly get here. Let's just keep the blue behind the, let's get right through there. Okay, let's actually just paint through it so you can see the full transition. I really hope this works because I do have a cool trick. I've used this before in other webinars, and it's it's pretty pretty fun. And it's it's kind of it, it'll help you demis pretend that this is a perfect horizon. I don't know why we have a somewhat of a transparent here, but that's fine. Let's see if it does it this time. Yeah, sweet. There's our mask. All right. Now we want to do a few things first. Um, First thing we want to do is we want to try to blend the sky to make it as dramatic. So again, let's go to our blending or our uh, adjustment layers, and we'll go to levels, and let's start darkening it up, making it pretty high key. So it's kind of, you know, you get that similar dramatic look. But here's the fun thing: let's go to the sky layer, and let's go to filter. Uh, blur, radial blur, and what we're going to do is we're going to select the blur method from spin to zoom. We're going to select our draft quality as best, and I'm going to bring this up pretty high just to give you uh, a representation of what's going to happen. Now, here's the key: is this blur center? The blur center, if you see here, the center points here, and what it's going to do is it's going to spread in equal directions, but we don't want that. We want the center point to spread kind of towards the top right. And so to do that, we're going to put our center kind of over here. And you see how it's spreading towards the top right? You see the motion of the lines? We're going to hit OK. Now we've got this kind of very cool motion in the clouds. And this is actually a trick that a lot of photographers that you know of do um, who don't shoot with neutral density filters because you get the best of both worlds as long as you have a good sky exposure. Now, again, we would want to make sure that we got a good blending in the mask. I'm not really too, we, that's something that's for a different day with Mask Pro. But we were able to get a very dramatic foreground and then put a totally different sky using Mask Pro and then use a simple blur tool, a radial blur, to kind of give this motion. And you see how the center point is over here and then it blasts out. Now, this is a bit strong, so you could, all you need to do is if we undo this, Let's just go to the history state. Go back to the, um, we actually have to go to the layer. Let's go to filter, go to blur. If you don't want that much blur, the nice thing is it keeps it sticky, so it retains the positioning. Just drop the amount down, and it won't be as strong. But you still get that motion, which is very pleasing. All right, so that's the image. I'll leave this image up here while we go through questions. All right. Can I use HD, um, oh, perfect layers to create an HDR image from several exposures of one layer, of one subject? Ross, great question. Great question. Now, I don't have the example here. I do have it in a different Lightroom catalog, which we can go to right now. Yes, you can. It's not called HDR, though. You don't want to really call that HDR. What you're going to call that is more like exposure blending. So here, um, my coworker, uh, Dan Harlicker, who's the uh, senior product manager at, I one, at On One Software, he went to Hawaii and he took, let's delete this shot here. And he took 
a shot here of two different exposures. One exposure for the background, so this is exposing for the sky, and one exposing for the foreground. And what he did was, you can take both of these images and send them to uh, perfect layers, and then do this. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of bring the opacity up, and we're going to select our masking brush to, well, let's bring the feather down, because for the upper portion, we we want the whole, oops, paint out. We want to bring out that whole sky. So you see how we're getting that. Now, here's the key. Um, as you get towards the horizon, what I typically do is, the first thing I do is I bring my feather all the way up, and I bring my opacity way down, because I want to control um, I want to try to minimize how much of the darkened exposure goes on the water. So you could drop your brush size and just kind of go here and get the sun. And because you have that feather, you're getting a lot of wiggle room. Oops, that was a sloppy. Oops, that's a sloppy one too. Too much coffee. Um, but you see how what I'm doing, and because it's at a lower opacity, it's iterative. Just like before with the focus brush, you have to keep drawing. Uh, now, you just see my cursor wiggling, but I'm actually picking my pen up and down. So I'm actually making several um, multiple strokes. And so, you know, that's kind of a way to do it. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time because um, I want to get to the other questions, but I hope that Ross had kind of gives you an idea. Bob, if you have to go, no worries. Um, this this is being recorded, so you can catch the end of it later on. Um, Susan is asking, can you show how to stamp layers again? Sure. Let's um, let's save this so it updates the PSD file. There's our updated PSD file. Let's send it to Photoshop. So you've got your two layers here with the mask. If you want to create a third layer that has the visible layers together, you can go to Layer, go to Merge Visible, but don't click it yet. If you put your mouse over it, it'll hover like this. Press and hold the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on a PC and click, and that will create the Merge Visible. And I attribute that to my friend Candice. I don't think she's on today, but she's a, a regular webinar follower, and she told me she found that because. The original shortcut, or the keyboard shortcut, if you guys want to know, I want to make a huge font on a Mac. It's command. Let me just bring it. command plus option plus shift plus E. Let me bring that out. And on a PC, it's control plus alt plus shift plus E. Now anything to avoid this oops is welcome because that's the thing about Adobe there is nowhere here that will show you stamp visible no matter what you do you will not find the word stamp visible it's only if you go to layer and go to merge visible and press the alter option key so how does that make sense I don't know um, Yeah, left fist plus E. <laughs> That's great, Jill. Um, Anthony, here, uh, this is, I'm going to type in my email address. I'm also going to give it out to everyone here, but email me. There you go. Um, So Marianne's wondering, you know, uh, she's a beginner, she has Max, and she only wants to do layers, uh, layer adjustments. Truthfully, perfect layers is, is that's that's why we built it. If you don't want the overhead of Photoshop, you don't want to spend the money on Photoshop. Perfect layers. If you're a new customer, it'll cost $159. If you already own the suite, 
it's free. It, you'll get it for free. Cheers, David. Um, <laughs> yeah, Susan says she loves the Ren left. I, uh, I am my, my, I entertain myself more than anyone, unfortunately. All right, let me go through some of these questions here. Um, what do you think the best size of Wacom tablets is to use wire or wireless? Um, I have two Wacom tablets. Uh, Ross, yeah, I'm going to give out the email address, uh, my email address, once I'm done here. Or I'll just give it to you. If you have to go, I'll just... I'll just put it in the chat module for so everyone can have it. Check your chat module in your GoToWebinar control panel. But I, I typically give it out at the end of the webinar. Uh, I have two computers at home. I have my laptop, which I travel with, and that's where I actually conduct these webinars. I've got my Mac Pro workstation, which is where I record the webinars, and I do all of my production photography work. The Mac Pro, I have a large Intuos 4 on the laptop, I have an Intuos 4 medium, and the medium is the pretty much the exact same size as a 15-inch MacBook Pro. So it fits flush against it. It's perfect for travel. My Wacom goes with me everywhere. Now, I have wired versions of both. The wireless is very, very cool, but it wasn't out when I um, when I bought my products. So I didn't. I'm not. I, there, for me, there's no need. If you are new to it and you're interested. Um, the wireless is awesome. I've played around with it. It's actually really good. So, um, what does the suite do for me, Marianne? Um, truthfully, I would recommend going to On One Software because we have videos of every product of, and what they do. That's a webinar in and of itself. Gary's saying that there's a lot of feedback to avoid the wireless version. Um, so, I would definitely read that feedback. It's always good to get an educated opinion. Um, and then just find somewhere that where you can try it. Oh, it's personal experience. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so Gary apparently has personal experience with it, so how do you spell how do you spell what, Mary? Yeah. Oh, no personal experience. <laughs> oh, man, I need to drop the coffee. Um, where would you resize before bringing to perfect layers? Oh, great question, Rosa. So Rosa's wondering where would perfect resize fit into this? So perfect resize, Marianne, is part of the perfect photo suite as well. And Rosa, you would typically do perfect resize when you're done. So um, I wonder if I saved that. I don't know if I saved that roller coaster image. But let's say, pretend this was my final image. I did all the editing. Now I would go to perfect resize. And there was a question just before of which products, which on one products will work in the Lightroom. Okay. Here is, here's the list. Perfect layers will work in light. Let me try to do it like this. We have seven products in the perfect photo suite. Perfect layers, photo tools, photo frame, mask pro, perfect resize, and focal point. Now, of all those products, mask pro and photo tools need Photoshop. All of the other products, you can launch them without Photoshop at all. Within Lightroom, though, you may see, well, you said, Brian, you said Photo Tools needs Photoshop. It does, but it is accessible from within Lightroom. So if you select this, it'll open up Photoshop in the background, but Photo Tools will come up. And then when you're done and you hit Apply, it'll go right back to Lightroom. So. Mask Pro, you need to go into Photoshop to launch. Oh, Wacom. W-A-C-O-M. I'll type it in the chat module. Sorry. It's W-A-C-O-M. Cannot recommend these guys enough. <laughs> 